Acute promyelocytic leukemia is a subtype of acute myeloid leukemia with several unique features. First of all, this leukemia is caused by a specific translocation between chromosomes 15 and 17. This leukemia has a unique treatment, which is all transretinoic acid. As we see, this drug is included in every treatment regime, and it's the only leukemia where we use ETRA. And the last and the most significant feature is that acute promyelocytic leukemia can cause severe bleeding complications by induction of disseminated intravascular coagulation. And it's the only leukemia that can cause DAC by itself. And it's the reason why this leukemia is very popular test question on examination. So let's explain all these features. Here we can see hematopoiesis. Recall that hematopoiesis can be subdivided on myelopoiesis and lymphopoiesis. So in normal condition, to make a mature neutrophil, stem cell has to undergo differentiation into common myeloid progenitor cell, and then progenitor cell undergo further differentiation into myeloblast. Myeloblast then mature into promyelocyte, myelocyte, then into metamyelocyte, then into bands, and only after segmented neutrophils are produced, which is the most mature form of neutrophils. But if mutation in the stem cell occurs, and in this case it's translocation between chromosome 15 and 17, this mutation will disrupt maturation of promyelocyte into myelocyte. So let's explain the mechanism of this mutation. Here we have chromosome 15 and 17. On chromosome 15 located PML gene, which encodes tumor suppressing protein. And you can guess from its name, the function of tumor suppressing protein is to inhibit uncontrolled cell growth. On chromosome 17 located retinoic acid receptor alpha gene, which provides the maturation of neutrophils. Basically, this gene controls maturation of promyelocytes into myelocytes. But if translocation between chromosome 15 and 17 occurs, a part of chromosome 15 binds to chromosome 17, and simultaneously a part of chromosome 17 binds to chromosome 15. The problem is that this small part of chromosome 17, which becomes translocated, carries retinoic acid receptor gene. And in these circumstances, these two completely different genes fuse together, which results in production of one large gene, which is now called PML retinoic acid receptor alpha gene. But the problem is that these genes do not function properly. So with fusion, two crucial genes lose their function. With loss of retinoic acid receptor gene function, maturation of neutrophils becomes disrupted. As a result, promyelocytes cannot mature into myelocytes, so this will cause accumulation of promyelocytes in the bone marrow. And with loss of PML gene function, the cellular growth becomes uncontrolled, which significantly stimulates the proliferation of promyelocytes. Here we can see how translocation between chromosome 15 and 17 looks like. One chromosome becomes larger and the second one shorter. So, translocation between chromosome 15 and 17, first of all, cause disruption of neutrophils maturation. As a result, the production of mature neutrophils decrease, which greatly increase the risk of bacterial infections. But also, this mutation cause accumulation of promyelocytes in the bone marrow, and accumulation of promyelocytes greatly increase the risk of disseminated intravascular coagulation which is the signature feature of this disease. To explain this, we have to recall secondary hemostasis. The central coagulation factor in secondary hemostasis is factor 10. Secondary hemostasis has intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway consists of factors 12, 11, 9 and 8. Extrinsic pathway has just factor 7. Both of them cause activation of factor 10. Activation of factor 10 results in activation of factor 5. Activation of factor 5 cause activation of factor 2. 
which is in fact conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. And thrombin cause activation of factor 1, which is conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. And fibrin, together with platelets, form thrombus. Once thrombus is formed, our fibrinolysis system becomes immediately activated. Plasmin, which is the crucial enzyme in fibrinolysis, begin to break down thrombus piece by piece, and the products which are formed during the breakdown of thrombus called D-dimer and fibrinogen degradation products. For assessment of intrinsic pathway, we use PTT, which is partial thromboplastin time. For extrinsic pathway, we use prothrombin time and international normalized ratio. Promyelocytes have a lot of our rods, which is in fact crystallized myeloperoxidase. With turnover, promyelocytes release our rods into the blood, but because in normal condition we have very small amount of promyelocytes, the release of our rods is minimal. On this image we can see promyelocyte, and inside the promyelocyte we can see our rods. In acute promyelocytic leukemia, mutation cause accumulation of promyelocytes, so the quantity of promyelocytes greatly increase. With increase in quantity, the release of our rods into the blood increase, and recall that our rods is crystallized myeloperoxidase, which is extremely aggressive enzyme, and in the blood, such high concentration of myeloperoxidase can activate all coagulation factors nearby. This results in overactivation of the secondary hemostasis with massive production of thrombin and fibrin. And fibrin molecules work like a spider web for platelets. Basically, every platelet that touches fibrin molecule just stick to it. And eventually, this will cause formation of a thrombus. But the problem is that now there are too much fibrin molecules and this enormous amount of fibrin molecules will catch enormous amount of platelets, and eventually this will cause two things. First of all, platelet count will decrease, and also this will cause massive production of thrombi. Massive formation of thrombi will cause overactivation of fibrinolysis, that in turn will cause increase in D-dimer and increase in formation of fibrinogen degradation products. Such massive thrombi formation is extremely dangerous, because thrombi can easily obturate any blood vessel. Thrombi can cause ischemia of the lower limbs, they can cause myocardial infarction, they can cause stroke or even pulmonary embolism. In fact, thrombotic complications is the most common cause of death at early stages of acute promyelocytic leukemia, and there is the reason why this leukemia is considered the most lethal. The signature feature of JC syndrome are schistocytes. To explain this, there is a blood vessel, and there is thrombus inside the blood vessel due to the DAC. When red blood cells will cross through this region, thrombus will split red blood cell on two, and such damaged red blood cell we call schistocyte, and it's the end of the first phase of DAC. In the second phase of DAC, we do not have coagulation factors, because once coagulation factor becomes activated, we cannot use this factor for the second time. So with massive activation of coagulation factors in phase 1, after a short period of time, we do not have any coagulation factors left. So total amount of coagulation factors decrease, and this will totally disrupt secondary hemostasis. Also, because in phase 1, organism overconsumes platelets for thrombi formation, there are just few platelets left, and without platelets, primary hemostasis cannot work properly. Disruption of both primary and secondary hemostasis can cause massive bleeding, with blood oozing from the puncture size. Decrease in amount of factors 12, 11, 9 and 8 disrupts intrinsic pathway, which manifests as prolongation of PTT. Decrease in factor 7 disrupts extrinsic pathway, which manifests as prolongation of PT and international normalized ratio. So, in acute promyelocytic leukemia, abnormal amount of promyelocytes accumulate in the bone marrow. 
increase in amount of promial sites cause increase in release of our rods into the blood. Our rods can trigger DAC, which in phase 1 can cause massive thrombosis. If patient survives phase 1 of DAC, this time phase 2 of DAC incoming. This time DAC cause decrease in amount of coagulation factors and decrease in platelet count, which typically manifest as bleeding and bruising. With decrease in coagulation factors, secondary hemostasis becomes disrupted, which manifests as prolongation of PTT, PT and INR. And also, because fibrinogen is one of the coagulation factors, the concentration of fibrinogen with DAC will decrease too. With formation of a thrombi, fibrinolysis becomes activated, which will cause increase in D-dimer and increase in fibrinogen degradation products. Here we can see a real blood analysis of a patient with acute promelocytic leukemia. We know that the major pathological event is accumulation of promyalocytes in the bone marrow. The turnover of massive amount of promyalocytes can cause DAC syndrome. And here we can see all signs of DAC syndrome, which is low platelet count, low fibrinogen level, and increased concentration of D-dimer and fibrinogen degradation products. Here we can see the results of blood coagulation study from a patient with acute promelocytic leukemia. And as we see, he has prolonged PT and PDT. And we know that it's because of depletion of coagulation factors caused by DAC. Eventually, promyelocytes begin to leak from the bone marrow into the blood. And because promyelocytes belong to white blood cells, this will cause increase in white blood cell count. And promyelocytes in the peripheral blood we determine as other or atypical leukocytes. So, leakage of promyelocytes into the blood creates this huge percentage of atypical leukocytes, and also because promyelocytes increase, white blood cell count also increases. On this image, we can see massive accumulation of promyelocytes in the bone marrow, and eventually some of them begin to leak into the blood. Here is abnormal leukocyte surrounded by red blood cells. Disrupted maturation of neutrophils results in neutropenia, which greatly increases the risk of bacterial infections. And we can see this on blood analysis. Because maturation becomes disrupted, bands and segmented forms cannot be formed, so their percentage is extremely low here. Another problem with promyelocytes is that because of mutation, they become very aggressive cells. They proliferate rapidly, and because of this, they very rapidly invade the space inside the bone marrow. This creates a huge problem, because bone marrow is located inside the bone, and bones cannot be distended. So promyelocytes basically begin to crowd out all other cells from the bone marrow. So, promyelocytes will force out all eosinophil precursors, which will increase the risk of parasitic infections. They will force out all monocyte precursors, as a result, the risk of bacterial infection increase. Also, basophil precursors will be forced out. Promyelocytes will crowd out all lymphocytes precursors, so lymphopenia will develop, and lymphopenia increases the risk of viral infections. Promyelocytes will crowd out erythrocyte precursors, so this time anemia will develop. And also, they will crowd out platelet precursors, so thrombocytopenia will develop. So, promyelocytes, this time, will crowd out normal cells from the bone marrow. As a result, lymphocytes will decrease, which will increase the risk of viral infections. Eosinophils will decrease, which will increase the risk of parasitic infections. Red blood cells and hemoglobin will decrease, and anemia will cause typical anemic symptoms. And platelets will decrease, which will only aggravate thrombocytopenia after the DAC. And in blood analysis, we can see these changes. Promyelocytes will crowd out eosinophils and lymphocytes, so their percentage in the blood will be low, also, promyelocytes will crowd out red blood cell precursors that will cause decrease in red blood cells production, so red blood cells will be low, 
hemoglobin will be low and hematocrit will be low. When promyelocytes crowd out normal cells from the bone marrow, they cannot just disappear, they have to take a shelter somewhere. So when normal cells are forced to leave the bone marrow, as human beings they come to places that were their homes before the bone marrow. We call them previous sites of hematopoiesis. It's spleen, lymph nodes and liver. So invasion of the bone marrow by promyelocytes force normal cells to leave the bone marrow and from the bone marrow in search for a shelter cells come back to places that were the sites of hematopoiesis before the bone marrow. Initially it's splenic tissue and with increasing amount of cells in the splenic tissue the size of the spleen will increase. It's lymph nodes so lymphadenopathy will develop and it's liver tissue so hepatomegaly will develop. Initially our major concern is to prevent DIC because it's the most common cause of death in these patients. And to prevent DIC we have to decrease the amount of promyelocytes. So to do it we use ETRA which is all transretinoic acid. ETRA force promyelocytes to mature into myelocytes which are less dangerous cells because they do not have such massive amount of our rods. And other agents that are used for treatment are non-specific. It's either rubicin or downorubicin with cytorabin. These agents we also use in other subtypes of acute myeloid leukemia.